Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the fade and why you should make it your stock shot. So today I'd like to talk to you about a fade, how to create a fade and why the fade should be your stock shot. When I'm talking about stock shots, it's far easier to play this game of golf if you know what direction the golf ball's trying to move. And in an awful lot of cases, the golf ball has got a side spin on it. This side spin is making it either be, turn off to the right or turn off to the left. So maybe the very first thing to do today is actually understand why that's actually happening. There's two major factors. The first one is what we call club path. That's the dis direction that the club head is moving at the moment of impact. And the second one is face angle. That's the direction that the club face is pointing at the moment of impact. And these two things in combination will either give the ball a spin to the right or a spin to the left. Strangely enough, hitting the straight shot, or maybe it's not quite so strange, is the most difficult thinking thing in golf. You've got to get face and path absolutely identical. Now there's all kinds of things which will factor into your face and your path, whether you're hitting it in the downswing, in the upswing, hitting it at a neutral point, whether you've got more loft, less loft on your golf club, all these things will factor in, but basically what they're doing is they're influencing the spin axis of the golf ball. I think everybody knows that the golf ball will be spinning backwards around its axis during uh, a, a flight. And this spin, apart from anything, is giving the golf ball lift. And by creating lift and tilting the axis, it means that the lift is pulling the ball off to one side or the other. The more discrepancy or difference between the direction that the club head is moving and the direction that the club face is pointing, the more that this axis will tilt. The straighter the club face that you're using, the more this axis will tilt, which is one of the reasons you'll find that you're slicing a ball or hooking a ball more with a driver than you do with your irons, even though you have the feeling of making the same swing. So my first uh, concern would be to see, have you got a standard shot shape? Now, a lot of you are probably fighting the slice, but if you can get that under control, maybe you can turn it into a fade. And that you can do quite simply if you know basically the general physics of making the movement. So let's go into that one first. Say you have a slice, you stand parallel to the target line, but for whatever reason, you are actually moving the club out to win the club face across the ball. Now, if the club face is then pointing at the target at the moment of impact, you're going to create a spin to the right as a right-handed golfer. All you have to do to reduce that spin to the right is close the club face. That means that as long as the club face is still pointing right of the direction that the club head is, is moving at impact, the ball is still going to bend to the right. It just won't bend as much to the right. And this is what a lot of you are unconsciously doing when you're closing the club face at address or you're strengthening your grip. Strengthening your grip basically means rotating your hands on the club so that the club face will be closed at impact relative to your target direction. But just because the club is closed to the target direction doesn't mean it's closed to the club path. I hope you caught me there. So I could be actually have the club face pointing left of the yellow flag out there, but I'm swinging even further left than the yellow flag out there and the ball will actually then fade. So it's not unfortunately something that I can demonstrate for you because um, it's not something obviously that I practice very often. But the basics would be club face close, strong grip coming from the outside on the ball you're going to be pulling across it, the ball is going to start well to the left, but it's then going to fade back into the target. Now, this might sound like an awful way of playing golf, but it can be pretty reliable, because if you're just hitting that shot shape, 
you're taking all the trouble on the left out of play. You know that the golf ball's going to go to the right, you can aim to the left, and you've got the whole golf course on the right hand side. If you are lucky and you have a pretty neutral shot shape, that means you might even be hitting a little draw when you just swing the club and don't think about it, it still might be worthwhile you're considering learning a fade, not just to get at those difficult pin positions on the green, but simply because the fade is a little bit more reliable than the draw. And if you look at a lot of the tour professionals, Dustin Johnson's a point in case, since changing to the fade, he became world number one and found that he was just hitting more fairways and greens by allowing the golf ball to move a little bit from left to right. Now by doing that, or to do that, what you want to be looking at first of all is your address position. As I said before, if in your normal swing you're coming a little bit from out to in, then there's not an awful lot you've got to do with your swing. You've just got to be thinking about face. So where is the face going to be pointing at, at, at the moment of impact? So if you start off with the club face square and you make your swing, and I'll try and come a little bit from the outside here, you might see the golf ball making this movement from left to right in flight anyway. The trouble is it's landing right of the target rather than landing on the target. So the trick here is to basically close the club face or at address or to strengthen your grip. Now if you're again thinking of the right-handed golfer here, this means rotating my left hand primarily slightly to the right on the grip. This will actually close the club face at impact, but again, relative to the swing direction to your club path, it's still pointing to the right. That will mean that although I come from the outside, my golf ball is now just fading back into the target. Now, it's probably a little bit difficult for you to see that, but that was almost the perfect shot there. Um, I'll try and put some little kind of flight directions on it so that you can actually see it with a line. But take my word for it, that worked. I have a pretty neutral golf swing, although I do tend to take it on the inside on the back swing, I come down on a pretty neutral path every time. And what I try to do then is to weaken off my grip a little bit. Because I'm coming neutral or slightly from the inside, which is reinforced especially with the irons where I'm hitting down on the ball, then I have to weaken my grip to play a standard fade shot. So rather than aiming at the target, I will actually aim slightly left of the target. And then with a slightly weaker grip, I will make my normal swing. And this is really a great way of fading a golf ball if you're capable of it. Because it really does give you that feeling in the grip at the address position. This ball just can't go to the left. So I can really kind of aim it up the left of the green, make my normal swing. And I can guarantee you the golf ball is not going left. And at 90% of the time, it's coming back into play and into the green. And that has become my stock shot whenever I'm wanting just to play the ball safe, keep it in play, not take on too much risk, which I think, especially for the majority of hobby golfers, is exactly the way you want to be playing golf. That one was right down its neck. Very, very simple ideas. If you are coming from the outside onto the golf ball anyway, you want to be strengthening your grip. And you strengthen it and experiment until you reduce the bend on the ball to a point where you have control over it. 
If on the other hand you have a neutral swing or you're coming from the inside, you want to weaken your grip. Again, that means moving the hands around to the left of the grip, which will help the club face to stay open through impact. That way you don't make any swing changes and in a lot of cases you don't have to even change your stance. If you're coming from the inside, you are better off aiming to the left of the target. If you have a standard swing that comes from the outside anywhere, you can keep staying standing on a normal parallel line to the target. I hope that all made a lot of sense. If it did, go out on the driving range and give it a try. You might be able to shave a couple of shots off your round next week. As ever, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. The little bell will give you notifications the next time that I post a video. Um, I'll be back very shortly to see you all again. Don't forget the, my little philosophy document up here on the left-hand side. See you next time. Bye-bye.